Hey everybody, it's Mike here from the We Rent Shop, and welcome to episode 11. This is the one you've all been waiting for, where the entire powertrain, engine, transmission, and driveline comes out of the M5. If you like what you see, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. I hope you enjoy. At this point, the transmission is completely detached from the chassis. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna reinstall the transmission mount because if I remove this pole jack, I can create kind of a dangerous situation. There's nothing supporting this transmission back here. So basically it would just be like suspended from the engine mounts and uh, that can get a little hairy, so. And the next thing is we're gonna to come to the front of the engine now and we are going to do undo the main ground strap. Now, one thing about this ground strap, this is really important. If you have an E34 with a charging problem, like alternator doesn't produce enough charging voltage like this car, this car kind of idles at 12.8 volts and it will not charge any further than that no matter what. So I have like this chronic dead battery problem and you know all kinds of other things. So if you have an alternator that's not charging, before you go get another alternator, check this ground strap. Because this, I don't know if you could see that, it's deteriorating. See how the insulation is split? Look at that. Look at that. I just, I just peeled that off of there. This is bare copper. Look at how deteriorated that strap is. That is actually, the, the jacket is off of that and that is bare copper there. So check out this ground strap before you rebuild your alternator or spend money on another one. So there are a couple things up here that we have to tangle with next. That's the servotronic plug on the steering box. So we're gonna unplug that and then tuck it up to the chassis there. And then right over here is the <laughs> my SLS delete job. Basically, this is the SLS supply line coming out of the power steering pump, and what you do is you loop it into the return line there, which is just, it uh, looks like a brake line, but it's not. It's just a return line for the SLS, and that goes directly back to the reservoir. So I have to undo that, push it to the side, and then undo the servotronic, and that'll be that. Move this servotronic first get this up out of the way. All right, that should be cool. And we will tackle this SLS. Same as the brakes. It's an 11 millimeter flare nut on the top and then you can counter hold with a 14. I'll push this up out of the way. All right, folks, we're at a pretty interesting junction right now. There's only two major things left to do before the engine and powertrain comes out of the bottom of this car all together. I have to unbolt the front and rear struts from the strut towers. Front's pretty easy. We have three bolts right here. In the back, I have to get into the interior, got to take the parcel shelf out, uh, got to take the C-pillars out to access those bolts. So that's definitely on the agenda. But right now, we're gonna deal with this crank bolt. This crankshaft bolt is torqued to 578 foot-pounds. And they explicitly mention in the manual that you need to loosen this bolt before you take the engine out. Now, we have a special tool. This is BMW Special Tool 112240. See if you can see that right there. The way that this works is it gets screwed to the crank hub and then provides a method to counter hold against the frame rail so you can loosen that bolt. With the engine out, even if you hit that with an impact, I'm not sure it's gonna even budge. So they recommend doing this with the engine still in the car. So next step, I zip tied these connectors out of the way. I zip tied this plumbing. We're gonna get rid of those. We're gonna get these belts out of here and uh, then we've got to pull this hub off. 
and then we will apply the tool. General rule of thumb, folks, when you're removing belts, you should always mark direction of rotation, but uh, these belts I am going to replace, so no need to do that. And if you recall from the previous video, these belts have this tensioning system where these teeth move up and down this guide here and that pivots the alternator and it creates tension on the belt. So this side is different from that side. That side had a bolt in the center of this adjuster with no nut on the back. This side has a nut on the back. So once we loosen that, we'll be in business. Let's go in there with my long 13. Now over here on the bottom of the power steering pump, we have the same situation. So I'm gonna go under there and undo it. Have to muscle that one off because the adjuster at the bottom stripped. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull all these 13s out of here and we will get this hub off of the vibration dampener. The trick. There we go. And now we bolt up the special tool. That is how it goes. And that other side of the tool is hitting the frame rail. Well, the vibration dampener bolts, or the pulley bolts rather, are not long enough. So we gotta go into the bolt inventory and see if I could find something. For this next part, I got my three quarter inch drive Snap-on L872 ratchet with 30 millimeter socket. My old service manager used to tell me, the guy in the shop with the biggest ratchet also has a smallest penis. Not me though. All right, here goes. Now that the crankshaft center bolt is out, the only thing left to do is to unscrew the struts from the strut mounts. Front's very easy, they're wide open, but in the back they're underneath the parcel shelf here. So what I have to do is uh, pull out the back seats. The bottom seat cushion is already out. The back cushion, there's supposed to be a nut here and a nut here, but they're missing. So uh, it should be pretty easy to get these out. You can detach from the bottom and then you pull up. Ow. Here are those mounting points that I spoke of earlier. There's supposed to be a nut there, obviously missing on both sides. When you have that loose, the back seats just kind of pull up. next step in removing the parcel shelf is to get the C-pillars out of here. They just clip in and then you have to undo the rear dome light. Yeah, there's a clip. I just pull out. Undo this. And the other side is the same. Now to pull out the rear shelf with both C-pillars out, 
There are supposed to be some fasteners here, but they are missing. And just pull straight out. The shelf does have clips where it clamps into the metal. There we go. Next, we have to take the rear speakers out in order to access the shock tower. So I'll do that with my right angle screwdriver here. Once the speaker is out, there's three Phillips head screws inside of the housing that come out. And once the speaker pods are removed, here are the shock towers. And there are three 13 millimeter nuts. Time to take down the front struts. Three 13s at each shock tower. So just to give you an idea of what I'm doing here, I'm putting jack stands underneath all the strategic structural points. There are actually two subframes in the front. There's the subframe that holds up the engine mounts, and then there's another kind of mini subframe, like a tube subframe that holds up the suspension. So that's what you see the two jack stands in the rear for. So you got two in the front, two directly behind, and then another one holding up the back of the trans. And in the rear, it's pretty much the same thing. Over here, it's just more than the same. Jack stands underneath the subframe, a strategic point. You gotta make sure that you know how the weight shifts when you wanna do this stuff. That's pretty much key. And also, I have to manipulate the lift arms because they're underneath the subframe. So I'm gonna have to shift those. Before we get to the best part, I just wanna pause here and tell you guys something. I wasn't able to capture on camera the process of loosening the front and rear subframe. The reason being it was very sensitive it was unsafe. I had to get under the car with it in that state on the ground with a whole bunch of tools and get under there. And I had to be very sensitive. I had to be hyper aware of my surroundings. But to accomplish what you're about to see, basically just all the subframe bolts had to come out. And I just had to be sure that all the elements were disconnected from the body of the car and all the weight on jack stands. So I hope you enjoy what you're about to see. It was a lot of work. for all the support that I've received so far. Make sure you check us out on all of our social media channels, Facebook at WeWrenchOfficial, Instagram at WeWrenchOfficial, and TikTok at WeWrench. So you can see the amazing progress on this project. My dream car, BMW E34 M5, complete rebuild and restoration. <laughs>